everybody, Tom here again for Shifter, and today we are going back in time. This is Tullio Campanolo. How's my Italian? Pretty bad, I think. Anyway, he was an Italian bike racer back in the 1930s. Back then, if you wanted to change gears on your bike, you know what you had to do? You had to stop your bike, get off, remove the back wheel, flip, or, flip it around so you could use the cog on the other side, reattach it, and get back on your bike and go. That was how bike racers at that time changed gears. The story goes that Mr. Campanolo was in a race in the fall, and when he got to the top of a big mountain climb, he was so cold, his hands couldn't unlock the back wheel, so he could not change gears, and he ended up coming in fourth. Bad enough that it motivated him to do something about it. So what did he do? He went on to start a company that became one of the most prestigious names in cycling, remains so today, Campanolo, Campy, the probably still the most prestigious maker of parts in the world. Over its long history, it's responsible for many innovations including perhaps the most important invention of the company, the derailleur. This allows a rider to change gears without getting off the bike, removing the back wheel, and reattaching the back wheel. You probably have a bike with a derailleur now. I mean, most of us do. They are the go-to gear-changing mechanism for bikes. But go back even farther in time, back to the start of the 20th century, to the golden age of cycling, and you will see a lot of little inventions that look something like this. This is also a way of changing gears, but it predates the derailleur by decades. This is an internal three-speed hub, and it's a different kind of technology. But these are relatively rare these days. What's up? So today we're gonna to look in the pros and cons of the different kinds of changing gears. That's the derailleur versus the internal hubs, and hopefully that will help you out on your, I don't know, your next bike purchase or your next bike commute. First up, the derailleur, which you probably know and love. You've probably been using it all of your life. Pretty simple concept. You flip a switch at your handlebar, it moves the cable, the cable pulls the derailleur, which moves the chain up the sprocket or down the sprocket, thereby shifting gears. Easy, right? Yes, of course, derailleurs are easy. Everyone loves them. They are cheap, relatively cheap. Uh, they're easy to repair, they're easy to maintain, they're light, they don't take a lot of weight, and they allow for many gears, especially if you have two derailleurs, one at the back and one at the pedal, sometimes an absurd number of gears. Ooh. This is the first time I'm riding this bike this season. Feels so good, love this bike. Anyway, this is my trusty urban three-speed bike and I'm riding it joyfully and guess what? It has no derailleur. What does it have? It has internal hub gears. Its gearing is inside an internal hub in the back wheel. How does it work? I don't know. It's all inside, it's like magic, I guess. But all I know is when I shift, the gears change. And there are some other important advantages to an internal hub as well. Number one, so all the bits, all the mechanics, all the gearing is inside this hub, which means it keeps out all the dirt, it keeps out the grit, the grime, which means maintenance is a breeze. It's almost maintenance free. I've had this one for years and I've never had it serviced. Probably not the best idea, but the point being, it's much less work than a derailleur. Uh, number two is it's stable because everything is inside here and it's actually inside the wheel, not on the side like a derailleur is. It's protected from those bumps and those nicks and those smashes that you get sometimes when you're riding a, a bike with a derailleur. Even sometimes I've been known to lay my bike down accidentally on the derailleur and that puts it out of whack. That's not gonna happen with an internal hub. You know when you get your screwdriver out and you pretend you know how to adjust a derailleur? You don't have to do that with an internal hub. Another thing, you can change gear without pedaling. And for noobs, this might seem weird if you're a veteran cyclist, but bikes with two derailleurs on the front and the back, that can get confusing for uh, noobs on the when they're shifting. Not a concern, there's one on the back. You can have anything from three to six, seven, eight, nine, sometimes nine uh, gears. It's all in case there on the back. There's different kinds of internal hubs as well. This is a Shimano Nexus, which is kind of like the cheap classic. It's been around for years. It's easy and reliable, but there are other kinds as well. This one's a little bit different. It's uh, an Involio using NuVinci technology. I talked about this one recently in another video where I talked about belt drives. So this one's different. It actually doesn't have gears at all. It's, it's called, what's it called? What do they call it? They call it continuously variable transmission or stepless, meaning it doesn't have gears. It just sort of tightens and loosens as you turn the uh, pistol grip. Very smooth, smooth like butter. So clearly I'm a fan of internal hub gears and why? Mostly 
It's the maintenance. They're so easy to maintain. And on commuter bikes, which is mostly the cycling I do, I don't have time to tinker with the railers or tune things up constantly. I just need a bike that's good to go whenever I am. And this fits the bill. So why don't we see internal hubs on more bikes? Well, I have a theory. Derailers are better for sports. On my road bike and on my mountain bike where speed and weight are important, derailers make a ton of sense. Manufacturers go to sometimes crazy lengths just to shave off a few ounces of weight and the derailleur makes this much easier than an internal hub because they're heavier. So if you're looking to save weight and go fast, derailers are the clear winner. And because North American bike culture is so centered around sports, the derailleur has just become the de facto gear changing device. Whenever you go to get a bike, that's what it is because most people, or at least most manufacturers, assume that people who are shopping for bikes are doing it for athletic reasons. In Europe, you see a lot more internal hubs because you tend to use the bike more for transportation and uh, internal hubs are a little bit more practical. They're less maintenance, they're easier to use, but this is a channel about commuter and practical cycling, so I'm coming out in favor of internal hubs. I'm not saying internal hubs are always the best option, but on your commute or your utility bike for getting around the city for transportation, I just want to say open your eyes a bit, give those internal gears a look next time. You might be grateful that you did. Thanks for watching. Hope that helps. See you next time.